Okay, so now that we know that there's a computer scientist, there's a bit of reason to be happy. Um, we moving to hiding in plain sight, memory type proofs uh, via randomness programming. As Rigid will give the talk, and this is joint work with Ridi Gosal, um, Joseph Yega, and Stefano Tesaro. Right amount of time. For a security reduction to be meaningful, uh, we want it to be uh, uh, time and advantage tight, meaning that we want the guarantees for pi and sigma to be as closely related as possible. In the context of memory aware reductions, we additionally take into account an adversary's memory while giving the security guarantee. This then allows us to analogously define this notion of memory tightness. But first, we must ask ourselves, why do we even care about memory tightness? Uh, let's take an example. Uh, consider the hard problem pi uh, to be the discrete logarithm problem in a 4096-bit prime field. Now consider the two following scenarios. One, where a scheme sigma has a, a memory tight reduction to pi, and another where a scheme has a, re a reduction to pi, but the reduction is not memory tight. Now, uh, for the former, uh, say, say we need security against adversaries running in time 2 power 160 and using memory 2 power 70. Uh, in the former case, uh, we need guarantees for pi, which is plausible. Uh, on the other hand, in the latter case, the guarantees that we need uh, for pi are known to be false uh, due to existing attacks. Therefore, the latter reduction gives us no guarantees at all. For this uh, reason, uh, memory tightness has been studied quite a bit over the last several years. Uh, there have been uh, impossibility results, as well as techniques uh, uh, given to make reductions memory tight. Uh, but the landscape of results is a bit strange. Uh, it's because there have been examples of uh, generic imp impossibility results gi being given and then later bypassed by considering uh, specific schemes or settings. Uh, even impossibility results uh, uh, tailored to specific schemes have uh, uh, been shown to be bypassed by just slightly tweaking the schemes. Further, uh, in this work, we show that the ability to give memory tight reductions actually depends a lot on the definitional choices we make. Uh, for this reason, we were motivated to increase the toolkit uh, to make reductions memory tight, and here we introduce a new class of uh, techniques that uh, will make uh, several different reductions memory tight. Uh, when we uh, show proof that uh, hardness of some problem pi implies a scheme is secure, what we are really doing is we are showing that given an adversary A that breaks the security of the scheme sigma, uh, we can transform it into an algorithm RA uh, which can uh, solve this problem pi. Uh, if the memory of R A is close to the memory of A, uh, then the reduction R is memory tight. Uh, uh, the main task here that R needs to accomplish is to make sure it uh, simulates the challenger for the security game of sigma 2A in a way that it is indistinguishable to A. To do this, R often needs to store state, and for the uh, reduction R to be memory tight, this state needs to be small. Uh, the starting point of our work is this following key observation that for certain reductions R, uh, if R answers some query with uh, some little a, then it needs to store some state sigma a that it requires only if the adversary replies with a at some point in the future. Uh, 
For these kind of reductions, we need to figure out a way how we can avoid uh, storing sigma a. Uh, our main idea here uh, is like hiding in plain sight. We uh, end up uh, showing that we can sometimes hide sigma a within a itself and then recover it later. Of course, this is not always possible, but sometimes uh, a has enough redundancy that this can be done. Uh, we give three different techniques of doing this. Uh, one where the sigma a is uh, the state is a bit and we can uh, recover very efficiently. Uh, we come up with a similar technique uh, where the recovery is not efficient and uh, adds to the running time of the reduction. We also give a more powerful technique which can recover sigma a that is more than a bit but still of bounded length but efficiently recoverable. Uh, I'll start with an example of the first technique efficient tagging. Uh, let me first, uh, first tell you the story of uh, digital signatures and memory tightness. So, unfortunability of digital signatures can be defined in two ways. One, uh, where the adversary can make only one forgery attempt, uh, which we refer to as UFCMA. Uh, another, where the adversary can make multiple forgery attempts, uh, we refer to this as MUFCMA. Uh, in the memory unbounded setting, these two results, these two notions are equivalent. However, in the memory restricted setting, our back et al showed that the reduction UFCMA implies MUFCMA cannot be both memory and advantage tight. Uh, let's see why. So this reduction first uh, forwards the verification key. Now for every signing query it receives, uh, it uses its own signing oracle to answer the query. Uh, when it receives a forgery query, uh, it has to first check if the uh, signature sigma is uh, sigma star is valid for the message m star, which it can do because it has the verification key. But additionally, it needs to check whether this message is fresh, meaning that whether or not it was queried to the signing oracle. To do this check, one option is to simply remember all the messages on which the adversary made signing queries. This will, of course, make the reduction non-memory tight. Uh, another option is to guess if it's fresh and then uh, it will become non-advantage tight. We, uh, the second option is not very important in the context of this talk. Uh, we will show how to get around this problem using our technique of efficient tagging. Uh, in more detail, what we'll show is, we will, uh, for any digital signature scheme DS, we will give a, uh, which is UFCMA secure, we will give a generic transformation uh, that converts it into another digital signature scheme RDS for which uh, the MUFCMA security has a memory and advantage tight reduction using efficient tagging. The uh, signing algorithm for the scheme RDS just samples some randomness and signs the message concatenated with that randomness and includes the randomness as part of the signature. Uh, this is a generalization of the probabilistic full domain hash. Uh, we show that uh, UFCMA security of DS implies uh, MUFCMA security of RDS in a memory and advantage tight way. Uh, in uh, concurrent and complementary work uh, by Demot et al, they show that for certain class of digital signatures DS, an enhanced form of strong UFCMA security implies strong MUFCMA security of RDS uh, in a memory and advantage tight way. Uh, our main idea here will be to uh, use this randomness uh, to ha hide in the randomness some kind of a tag that will later help us identify whether a query is fresh or not. Uh, in more detail, uh, the, uh, when, uh, when the reduction receives a signing query, it will choose the randomness ri in a way that uh, it will hide the, uh, the randomness will hide the info whether or not the message is fresh. And later, when the reduction receives a forgery query, it will use the same randomness, uh, to, uh, the hidden info in the randomness, to uh, determine whether or not to output the forgery. Uh, the way we implement this is uh, uh, when the adversary queries a message MI to be signed, uh, the reduction computes the randomness by evaluating uh, the, uh, uh, an injective tweakable random function F on uh, the message MI and I. And uh, later, during a forgery query, it checks uh, whether the inverse of uh, the forged message and the forged randomness is in 1 through Q, where Q is the total number of signing queries. Uh, to see why this works, suppose uh, the adversary forged on a message m star uh, with signature sigma star r star, 
Suppose if indeed this was a valid uh, forgery, uh, if sigma star r star is indeed a valid signature for m star, um, then uh, if uh, the m star r star uh, had been queried by the reduction to its own signing oracle, it's easy to check that the inverse i will indeed uh, lie in one through q, uh, and hence the reduction will not output the, output the forgery like we want it to. Uh, again, if m star r star had not been queried by the reduction to its own signing oracle, one can show that uh, with high probability, this inverse will not lie in one through q, and therefore the uh, reduction will output the forgery again like we wanted to. Uh, so here, the additional memory required by the reduction is the memory required to, sim uh, to implement this uh, fu function f, which is actually a large random object. Uh, here we use this standard trick of replacing a large random object with a pseudo random one, and then a pseudo random uh, object can be implemented using little memory. Uh, for instance, the example we had in the previous slide, which would requ require a tweakable injective PRF, can be instantiated using a block cipher. So we saw a technique where this recovery was efficient, which uh, namely it just required uh, inverting this function f. Now we'll see a technique where this recovery is not efficient and leads to increased running time for the reduction. For this, let me first recall the common left or right uh, formalization of CCA security for public key encryption. Here, the, an adversary has to distinguish between a left world and a right world. Uh, it chooses two messages, M0 and M1, and receives an encryption of M0 in the left world and an encryption of M1 in the right. In both the worlds, it has access to a decryption oracle, which returns the bottom symbol if queried uh, on the ciphertext that the, was returned by the encryption oracle. Uh, <clears throat> of course, now we can define a multi-version of this definition where uh, the adversary can make Q encryption queries instead of one. Uh, a very, very simple crypto 101 result shows that one CCA implies um, multi-CCA using a hybrid argument. However, this reduction is, all, all, is not memory tight, uh, uh, and it can be a little subtle and easy to miss. Let's see the reason why. Uh, so this reduction first uh, gets as input the public key, which it forwards. Uh, now it chooses uh, some uh, k uniformly at random in one through q. Uh, and uh, on, on the ith encryption query, it answers with uh, the encryption of the right message if i less than k. Uh, with the encryption of the left message if i is greater than k and otherwise use its own encryption oracle to answer the query. Now, when it receives a decryption query on a ciphertext C, it can of course use its own decryption oracle. However, if C is same as one of the ciphertexts returned by the encryption uh, queries, uh, then the reduction needs to return the bottom symbol. And to do this, the naive way we generally give the reduction is we make it remember all the prior uh, uh, CI stars. And this makes it non-memory tight. Uh, we will use inefficient tagging to uh, solve this issue. Uh, our key idea here is uh, instead of sampling the random coins uh, during a, a encryption, uh, we will use randomness, which is actually completely determined by the message and some counter i. Later, when uh, a decryption query is made on a ciphertext, uh, the reduction will first use its own decryption oracle to get, get the decrypted message m. And then to figure out whether this ciphertext C is a challenge ciphertext, uh, it will re-encrypt the message using the randomness corresponding to the message and ev every counter. Uh, in more detail, uh, the uh, randomness during encryption would be computed as uh, the evaluation of a random function on the message and a counter i. Later, when the reduction receives a decryption query on C, it will use its own decryption oracle to get the decrypted message M. Then it would re-encrypt M with randomness FMI for every uh, I, and then check whether if any of these encryptions are same as C. If so, it will return the bottom symbol, otherwise it will return the message uh, M. Uh, why does this work? Uh, if uh, this ciphertext C was same as uh, some CI star, of course, one of the re-encryptions will be same as C, uh, therefore it will correctly return the bottom symbol. And one can show that with high probability, if, uh, if C is not one of those CI stars, the, none of the re-encryptions will be same as C. Uh, and therefore, it will return the message uh, like we want. OK, 
Okay, so here we have a reduction, but it's not time tight because it has to iterate through all of the counters. So we must ask ourselves, are non-time tight reductions completely useless? Well, no. Sometimes it, it might be better to have memory tightness over time tightness because for many of the hard problems that we use in cryptography, the fastest memoryless algorithm is much slower than the fastest algorithm in general. But for this case, suppose we really, really want to have a memory tight reduction that is also time tight. Can we do anything? Turns out that if we change the definition, uh, we can actually get a memory tight and time tight reduction. So let me introduce to you the, uh, uh, so, okay. So, so we will use our technique of message encoding uh, for, uh, for this result. Uh, we will, I'll first introduce this uh, definition of real or random CCS security. Here, uh, an adversary has to uh, distinguish between a real world and an ideal world. Uh, it chooses a message and in the real world gets, it, gets its real encryption. Uh, while in the ideal world, it gets a random uh, ciphertext in response. In both the worlds, it has access to a decryption oracle, which returns the uh, message if queried on the uh, ciphertext that was returned by the encryption oracle. Of course, we can again define a multi version of this, of this definition where uh, the adversary makes uh, Q encryption queries instead of one. Uh, Again, we can show using a hybrid argument that the single version implies the multi version. And again, this is not memory tight, but the reason is a little bit different. Uh, so here, again, the uh, reduction uh, forwards the public key, chooses a K uniformly at random in one through Q uh, for the ith encryption query, answers with a random ciphertext if I less than K, answers with a, re a real ciphertext if I is greater than K, and otherwise uses its own encryption oracle. Now, when it uh, receives a decryption query, Keep in mind that this, uh, if the ciphertext is same as one of the challenge ciphertext CI stars, it needs to return MI. So it will use its own decryption oracle. However, if C is same as a CI star for I less than K, then the CI star was chosen uniformly at random, and there's very little chance that it would indeed be the encryption of MI. So uh, the uh, naive way to uh, fix this is to make the reduction remember all the MI and CI star for I less than K. And of course, this makes the reduction non-memory tight. So we will use message encoding to fix this issue. Uh, our main idea here is instead of uh, sampling these CI stars uniformly at random for I less than K, uh, we will encode the message MI into CI star. And later, when a decryption query is made, uh, we'll first decode the ciphertext and check if the decoded answer is uh, of the right format. If so, we'll return the decoded message Otherwise, use the decryption oracle. So uh, we, we see an example here where, depending on the definition we use, we, we have a memory tight reduction that is time tight, or uh, for another definition we have uh, where it is memory tight but not time tight. So a very important lesson is the quality of the memory tight reduction that we can give relies a lot on uh, our definitional choices. Uh, in addition to this, uh, in, in, our, in the paper, we also show a memory tight, uh, 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 memory tight authenticated encryption security for the encrypt and PRF construction uh, that bypasses a generic impossibility result from an earlier work. Uh, uh, we also generalize the memory tight uh, reduction result for RDS that I showed uh, to capture uh, a setting uh, that captures uh, signatures used in TLS 1.3. Uh, further, we give a time, memory, and advantage tight reduction uh, for MEFCMA uh, security of uh, RSA PFDH to RSA. Uh, to conclude, I would again re like to reiterate the message that uh, our ability to give memory tight reduction is, uh, strongly couples with the definitional choices we make. Uh, also, we should always uh, we should take uh, impossibility results in context of memory tightness with a pinch of salt because, as we saw, we can often bypass them. Uh, uh, the important open problems uh, in this uh, area, one of them is to come up with more techniques beyond the handful ones we know. And uh, uh, also we need to understand which definitions are the right ones in these memory restricted settings. Thank you. So are there questions? OK, 
Okay, so one question is, um, have you made any progress on this last open question that you say, like um, understanding what are the right definitional choices for um, memory type reductions? Uh, no, uh, we, we, we have, we, yeah, like, uh, we have a lot of more, even more examples of where, like, first, if you tweak the definition in a way that there are, uh, you can, you cannot give any memory type reduction at all, but we have not been able to, like, prove that it's impossible for those cases. So one starting point could be to, like, show that, uh, like, a separation. So we have not shown any formal separations. We have located examples where for one definition you can have memory tightness and for another it's, it's, it appears hard. Because this seems very artificial, right? That's yes, yes. That's why it's important to figure out which definitions to use. Okay, so if there are no questions, we will move to the next speaker.